What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, I'm gonna break down all of the equipment I'm gonna be using in my Catch 15 Challenge this week on Kerr Reservoir in Oklahoma. Let's get into it. For this week's Catch 15 Challenge, we're heading to Kerr Reservoir in Oklahoma. This is a pool on the Arkansas River, but it's a lot wider than the normal pool and it resembles a lake more than a river, especially on the lower end. The average water visibility on the lower end is between a foot and a half and two foot of visibility. So we're dealing with stained water and because it's on the Arkansas River, we're also dealing with a lot of shallow vegetation, rocks, wood, and great shallow water cover. As you guys know, I love fishing offshore, but this week I'm gonna challenge myself to fish up shallow. We're currently in the middle of August, which means water temperatures should be in the mid to high 80s, especially in that dirty water. We also haven't had a lot of rain over the past few weeks, and while for most of the summer, Kerr Reservoir had a lot of current running through it, now there's barely any current. This is going to make it pretty difficult to find a consistent bite, and I won't just be able to run obvious main river current spots like I might have been able to in June. While this might make it a little more difficult to catch 15 pounds, Kerr Reservoir is a very healthy fishery with a lot of three and four pound bass, so I should be able to put 15 pounds in the boat if I can get on the right pattern quickly. In terms of my strategy of how I'm going to actually attack this fishery, I actually got into it in my last video a little bit, where I actually broke down the areas that I plan on checking out using Navionics and Google Earth. So check out that video if you want to get a more in-depth look at the spots that I'm going to be fishing in this challenge. As far as my overall strategy, I'm planning to fish shallow water exclusively in this challenge. You heard your first. Shallow water only. As you guys know, I love to fish offshore. That's where my strengths are. But back in the day, I used to be a river rat. And I fished the Arkansas River Pool 5, 6, and 7 a lot growing up. And actually, I was better fishing the Arkansas River than any other fishery in the entire country. So hopefully, I'm going to be able to take some of my past experience fishing shallow, dirty river systems and apply it here on Kerr Reservoir. So let's not waste any more time and jump straight into the tackle I'm gonna be using. And the first bait I'm gonna show you is going to be my go-to bait, I feel like, on this fishing trip. In the middle of August on the Arkansas River, my go-to bait was a swim jig. But this is a very, very special swim jig that I've never talked about in the video, and I didn't think I was ever gonna share this with you guys. But because I'm doing this Catch 15 Challenge, I need to pull out all of the stops, pull out all of my secrets, and I'm gonna show you guys a little glimpse at my secret swim jig modification that I've used since I was like 14 years old, and it is absolutely deadly. So basically, I'll throw up some pictures here of a regular swim jig. This is a Strike King Hack Attack swim jig, 3 8 ounce, with the stock skirt and a black and blue striking rage craw. This is the swim jig that a lot of guys are probably gonna be throwing on Kurt Reservoir and on the Arkansas River, swimming it around shallow grass, maybe fishing it around lily pads, lay downs, whatever that is. And this is just a very standard common bait, one of the most popular baits in the country, honestly. And because this bait is so popular and gets fished by so many anglers, I've always looked for ways to modify this bait to be a little bit different from what everyone else is doing. So if we take a look at my modified swim jig here that is a little bit unique, what I've basically done is I started out by removing the skirt on the stock swim jig. I then put a new skirt that I hand tied on this bait. The skirt is made up of two different types of skirting material. The first is a flat line rubber that is double thick. It's extra thick and that's a black rubber. And then there's also a, a regular kind of old school rubber that's the regular width but has a little bit more um, a spring to it than a silicone skirt. It kind of sticks off the body of the bait a little bit more and that's in a blue color. This creates a black and blue jig with a beefier, wider profile than your standard silicone skirt. In addition, I've hand tied this bait with some copper wire. And I basically just put it in a vise. And if you guys want a video showing how I actually hand tie these jigs, I do this with some finesse jigs and also some of my swim jigs. I can make a video on that. Let me know down in the description or down in the comments below. But basically, the reason that I modify my jig skirt like this is because I want this jig to fall as slow as possible when I stop swimming that bait. A lot of guys think about swim jigs as a fast moving approach where you cast it up in the shallow grass, work it quickly over the surface, and the fish will come up and eat it. And this is definitely an effective way to catch fish. 
But when you're fishing in really dirty water, a foot of visibility, foot and a half visibility, and you're fishing in shallow bank grass, whether that's water willow or any other type of shallow vegetation, I find that I get a lot of bites on my swim jig after I swim that bait through the grass, get it to the edge of the grass, and then kill it and let that bait fall. And what happens is with a regular silicone skirt, especially these skirts that come on the swim jigs, they're very thin. And that causes the swim jig to fall pretty quickly. And what that does is it basically doesn't give those fish enough time to see that bait and track that bait in that dirty water. Therefore, with my modified skirt, this is twice as thick as a regular swim jig skirt. It has that thicker flat line rubber, which drags more water and slows the fall of that bait. And also by hand tying the skirt, it actually flares that skirt out even more, making it fall even slower. So this three eighths ounce jig now might fall slower even than a quarter ounce jig. Now you may be wondering why I don't just go with a quarter ounce jig to start with, and I just find that it's tougher to cast and skip the jig when there's a quarter ounce. So I like this three eighths ounce size, it's just the size that I've always gone with. But by making a bulkier skirt on this bait with thicker rubber, hand tying it, the fall rate of that bait is so much slower. And when I get to the edge of that grass, I'll let that bait fall really slow. And that's where I get about 75% of my swim jig bites. And a lot of guys don't even target those fish or know those fish will even bite that swim jig. And something that I definitely have used to catch a ton of fish in tournaments and behind other anglers before. And it's one of my major modifications that I've never shared, never talked about it with literally anyone other than like a few close friends. So cat's out of the bag now, and I'll leave links down in the description to all of the skirting material, all of the wire and everything I use down in the description below. You can pick that up on Tackle Warehouse using my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. And if you use that, I get a small percentage of the profits. So appreciate that. And don't worry, I went and bought a bunch of this material so that when you guys eventually uh, stock it out, which always happens when I talk about stuff, I still have my own stash, so don't worry. But uh, another thing I do to modify my swim jig is, as you can see, the normal trailer here is a black and blue trailer. And a lot of guys just like to match black and blue jig, black and blue skirts, stuff like that. I actually like to go with this sapphire blue or electric blue trailer. And I find that this gets me a few extra bites as well, just by differentiating that bait from others in dirty water, especially if that water is very stained, six inches to a foot of visibility. If I get in some clear water, I might go to back to the black and blue, or I may even go to a green pumpkin trailer on the back of this jig if you have, you know, let's say two foot of water visibility. But that uh, blue sapphire is an awesome color on the back of a swim jig. And I've caught, you guys have no idea how many fish on this exact swim jig right here. Maybe not the exact setup. I've had to get different skirting material over the years uh, that is thicker and stuff like that. But this is the one that I find now readily available. So that's gonna be my number one go-to bait. As far as my setup for this, I'm just throwing this in a seven foot two medium heavy action bait casting rod. This is a Quantum Smoke S3 rod. I go with a seven foot two medium heavy because I'm not gonna be casting this bait super far, but I'm also not going to be really getting it down deep into the cover. I'm either gonna be fishing on the edge of the grass or over the top of the grass. So you don't need a super long, stiff rod, but I do want a rod with a little bit of tip in case I need to skip this bait around trees or under boat docks or something like that. So seven foot two medium heavy works great. And I'm putting that with 20 pound Sunline FC sniper fluorocarbon. So 20 pound test uh, fluorocarbon lime. And a lot of guys like to throw swim jigs with braided lime. I find that if I set the hook really hard on those fish, I'll actually tear a hole in their mouth and lose a lot of fish with braid on the swim jig. So I always go with fluorocarbon just to avoid uh, fish losses. And it's helped out a ton over the years. So that's kind of my number one go-to bait and any of the shallow water willow, uh, even some of the shallow, uh, you know, lay downs and stuff like that. I'm gonna be throwing that jig a ton. The next bait I'm gonna to go to is another little sneaky bait that Randy told me about. And I haven't really thrown it a ton yet, but because he's telling me it's all the rage, I'm gonna start uh, experimenting with it. And it's this uh, Megabass Knuckle LD crankbait. Little square bill crankbait with a circuit board lip. And it's basically the exact same profile as the Strike King KV 1.5 crankbait that I love to throw. One thing about those KVD crankbaits though, is I always break the bills on them when I'm casting them around shallow rock, especially on the Arkansas River. And I might break two or three bills on those crankbaits every single day. And it's just annoying to have to retie and worry about it so much. So that circuit board lip does not chip, it does not break. And I'm hoping that I can just kind of keep this bait uh, on, on the line the entire day without worrying about breaking the lip. I normally don't lose these baits because they go so shallow. I'll just get up there and pull them out of the rocks. But breaking the bills is kind of annoying. So I'm hoping that this 
crankbait works out really well for me. It has these spinning hook hangers, which are interesting too. Uh, I'll leave a link to the description in the description again with this bait. Uh, interesting bait, I'm gonna see how it works. And as far as my rod for this, I'm just throwing this in a seven foot medium light quantum tour special edition rod. This is a discontinued rod. So I don't know if you guys can even get this anymore, but uh, it's just a seven foot medium light action rod. And I'm pairing that with a uh, Abu Garcia Black Max reel. I had an old quantum reel on this one. I didn't mention it because it's literally 12 years old. But it's just a 6 3 one gear ratio reel. This is a, one of my favorite reels though, the Abu Garcia Black Max, $39 I think when I picked them up a couple years ago. And a lot of guys in my last video were talking about my cheap reels and I've had literally like 12 Abu Garcia Black Maxes that I bought a year and a half to two years ago and basically they've been solid except for one reel for the past two years. Now I fish a lot, so I mean, the fact that these reels are holding up to the stress and the pressure and everything for my type of fishing works really, really well. So um, I like my cheap reels, they do great. And I'm throwing that on monofilament line. A lot of you guys also wanted to know why I throw monofilament on my crankbaits. I can make a video on that as well if you want me to explain that. It's just something that, uh, it's a whole thing. I'd have to explain it in a full video, but I have a rhyme and reason for it. And this is just some old Stren original 14 pound monofilament. And so that's kind of the deal right there. So that is gonna be kind of my one, two punch. I'm probably gonna throw the square bill a lot around rocks and any laydowns that I find. And I'll throw the swim jig around, again, laydowns when I wanna to pitch to them, and also that shallow water willow grass. If you don't know what I'm talking about with all these areas, again, go check out that prep video I just posted a couple days ago where I broke down all the spots I'm gonna fish, and I used Google Earth, and actually showed you some really cool tricks on how to identify great stretches of water willow grass on Google Earth. So go check that out. That's another secret that I've never told anybody about. So go check out that video. In terms of other baits I'm gonna be throwing, these are kind of baits that I kind of just have on the deck of the boat, honestly, just in case some conditions uh, show up. I would say that probably 80% of my fishing day is going to be with the swim jig and the square bill crank bait, but kind of some niche baits that I'm kind of just gonna have on the deck of the boat in case the situation arises. First one is a Spro Bronze Eye Poppin' Frog. This is just a classic topwater frog. If I find any lily pads out on the lake, uh, I did see one stretch of lily pads on my prep video that may look good that I might be able to catch some fish out of. And also if there's some really thick water willow grass, I might be able to get a bite on the frog. And I'm just pairing that on an old Quantum Dean Rojas signature series uh, frog rod. He used to throw this with old Kermit the Frog if you guys watched the Bassmasters back in like the mid 2000s. And this is like a 15 year old rod. The seven foot medium heavy action rod, throwing that with 65 pound Stren braided line it's called Sonic Braid, I don't think they make it anymore. I just have a big spool of it. And I'm throwing that on a equally old 15 year old Quantum TE uh, or 11, yeah, TE 1170 burner reel. This is a seven to one gear ratio reel. Back when seven to one gear ratio reels were the fastest reels on the market. And they even have a little flame icon there because they're so fast, seven to one. I still think seven to ones are fast reels, but that's my setup there in case, you know, I run into some fish around some really thick cover that maybe I can't get the jig through, that frog can go over the top of it and those fish can kind of come up through the vegetation to eat it. Now, first thing in the morning, I probably am gonna throw that swim jig the most just because I have a lot of confidence that I'm gonna connect with the bites I'm gonna get. But if I do kind of want to try something different, I also have a buzz bait tied on here. A buzz bait is a great bait to get some big bites. And if I find myself in a situation where I have a limit of fish and I just need one big bite, I might just go to this buzz bait. It's a 3 8 ounce War Eagle buzz bait, all black, and it's the toad, uh, the buzz toad buzz bait. So I put a zoom horny toe on the back of it. It has a little keeper to keep that buzz bait up. And this is just an awesome buzz bait, caught a ton of fish on it. And you're gonna see it a lot more this fall because I throw the buzz bait a lot in the fall on clear water lakes, dirty water lakes, any lake. So you'll see this a lot more in the future. And I'm just pairing that with a new rod that I kind of uh, got recommended from Randy. It's the Perfect Pitch Levante Mega Bass rod. I'm trying to get new rods to experiment with so that I can review them. Because as you can see, some of my rods are like 15 years old. So um, picked up this rod to see what it was like. Mega Bass Levante, seven foot two medium heavy action rod. Uh, haven't thrown it yet, but we're gonna see how it goes. Just pairing that with a seven to one Abu Garcia Max Z reel. 
with some 65 pound braided line. This is just another $39, $49 reel. So that's the buzz bait. And then another kind of niche bait that I have here. The, if I can catch him on this, it's going down. We're gonna get, we're gonna crack 20 pounds if I can catch him on this thing. This is a bait I have a lot of confidence in. I caught him over the years in the Arkansas River on it, but it takes a very specific situation to catch him. This is a one ounce hack attack black and blue flipping jig. Heavy cover flipping jig. It has a beefy hook. It's one ounce. And you guys are probably wondering why are you throwing a one ounce jig when you're fishing shallow, dirty water? Well, I'll tell you. If you can find any sort of lily pads that have deeper water on the outside edge, let's say three to four feet of water, maybe five foot of water, or if you can find some really nice uh, reeds that have four or five foot of water on the outside edge of them, in August, you can hammer them on a one ounce jig. I'm gonna probably throw this for about maybe 30 minutes throughout the day on a couple different spots to see if I can pull up a couple fish. Cause if I can get a pattern going with this, it'll be lights out. It's not very often that I actually get on a pattern with this, especially in a single day of fishing with no practice. I, I haven't been to Kerr Reservoir in like two years, so I don't know where any fish are or anything like that. So I'm just gonna kind of have to wing it. But basically, if they're on this one ounce jig, it's going to be game over. And I'm just throwing that with another, uh, unfortunately, I think discontinued rod. It's the Tactical Series Greg Hackney Hack Attack uh, Flippin' Stick, seven foot 10, heavy action rod, no, seven foot 11, seven foot 11 heavy action rod. And I got the hack attack jig with hack attack flipping stick. Um, any flipping stick will really do though. Got a black max reel, 39 bucks with 65 pound Stren Sonic braid. Again, discontinued line that's super old, but it does the job. One thing you'll notice is I do have a lot of braid on here more than I normally do, just cause I'm fishing in shallow, uh, thick cover. I got braid on my big flipping jig. I got braid on the buzz bait and braid on the frog. You don't see me fishing a lot of braid offshore just because I like that fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon gives me uh, more, I feel like it gets me a few more bites. I just don't like to deal with braid to fluorocarbon knot and stuff like that through a bait caster. So the only time I really pull up braid is when I go up and really fish heavy cover in shallow water. So those are kind of my, I guess, tried and true go-to baits when I want to go on the Arkansas River or any dirty water lake in August and put some big fish in the boat. Got the square bill, swim jig, frog buzz bait, and then the big heavy jig. Now, if I get out to the lake and the fishing's a lot tougher than I'm expecting, I also have to have a few contingency plans and baits that I can use that are a little more finessey to put some fish in the boat. The first one is another secret. I'm giving up all the juice in this video, guys. I don't talk about this stuff that much because I don't fish up shallow. You would see these more if I did more shallow videos. But this is a Strike King Custom Shop crankbait. It's basically just a uh, balsa wood crankbait, flat-sided crankbait, and it has a circuit board lip on it. And I have absolutely destroyed them on this bait over the years. I caught my personal best bass. Uh, that was almost nine pounds when I was like 12 years old on this bait. I've been throwing it forever. Uh, I've won two state championships for youth fishing on this bait. I've won several tournaments on this bait and it just absolutely is a fish catcher. It dives about five to six feet deep and there are a few comparable square bill balsa or flat side uh, balsa baits on the market. I'll link one down in the description below that you can pick up. It's basically the exact same body style and design and it's just an absolutely killer bait when those fish are really pressured. If the fish are maybe short striking my normal square bill, or if I feel like that square bill is not getting deep enough, I can go to this little bit deeper diving bait, get it down those rocks and catch some really big fish. I'm throwing this on a uh, Veritas Winch PLX uh, crankbait rod, I think. I think it's a crankbait rod. It's the, I'll put a link in the description again. Uh, it's a seven foot medium moderate. The moderate action is really important, guys, when you're fishing these light crankbaits that also have the treble hooks. The medium light action rod that I showed you earlier for the square bill I'm throwing has a comparable action to the medium moderate. So when I'm fishing these small treble hook baits, I'm either going with a medium light action bait casting rod or medium moderate. For this bait, I'm actually throwing this on some fluorocarbon line and I'm bucking the trend with my monofilament line, but this is 12 pound a fluorocarbon Seaguar Invisex. And I've just been throwing this bait on fluorocarbon for years and I just know how it reacts to this line. 
So that's why I'm doing it. I have changed over the monofilament for 95% of my crankbait fishing, but for this bait, I still throw fluorocarbon just because I'm kind of sentimental about it and it gives me confidence that I'm gonna catch them. So that's the deal on that bait. Another bait that I'm gonna throw that is, gosh, so, so many secrets coming out. Another bait that I throw a lot is a kind of a, a playoff of the old bacon rind that Davey Height used to win the 1999 Bassmaster Classic on Louisiana Delta. And I watched that classic like 75 times when I was a kid. It was when I, uh, one of the first Bassmaster magazines I actually ever got was an old edition from 1999. I was only like three years old when that tournament was fished or four years old. But basically the, um, the bait I'm throwing here is a Strike King, uh, was it the Smokin' Rooster? That's what it's called. The Strike King Smokin' Rooster. And it's basically just this creature style bait with two appendages on the side and a little a hook tail on the bottom. And this bait is great fished in a very specific way. Basically what I do with this bait is I will cast it out and swim it back to the boat by laydowns and dock pilings and things like that. I don't actually fish this on the bottom. That's one thing that Davey Height did in that Louisiana Delta Classic. He caught all of his fish in the backwater by swimming that old bacon, bacon rind, I think that's what it's called, the gambler bacon rind, uh, swimming it past the trees and limbs and stuff, fishing for suspended fish in the middle of August. So if I do find myself catching some fish around some laydowns, some boat docks, whatever it is, I might be able to swim this smoking rooster by Strike King by there in the green pumpkin or the uh, black and blue color and get a few bites. So just a little sneaky deal that I've used on the Arkansas River a few times to catch some pretty big fish. I'm just rigging that on a 3 16 ounce tungsten slip sinker. I'm pegging the weight so that way the weight stays close to the bait while I'm swimming it. And then I'm pairing that with a 5 aught EWG Gamakatsu hook. So pretty st standard stuff there. Uh, as far as my rod, I'm just throwing a seven foot six heavy action rod, Quantum Smoke S3 rod with 17 pound fluorocarbon line. You could also go with 20 pound, but I just don't have 20 pound tests on that many rods. So I just went with 17. It's actually my football jig rod. It should probably do the job, no problem. And just pairing that with a Black Max, Abu Garcia Black Max, 17 pound Seaguar and Viz X. So that's the deal there. Last but not least, my least favorite rod in the boat, the Fairy Wand. Uh, had to put it up, pull it out. I just did a live stream where I actually went out in the lake and showed guys how I find fish on a lake that I hadn't been to in like six months. You can go to the Fish the Moment live channel to find the video. I literally went out for two hours, launched the boat on a lake I hadn't been to in forever, graphed around, found the fish, showed you how I found them, graphed around, said there's the brush pile on the graph i cast it at the brush pile and caught some fish it was a pretty cool live stream caught some fish and the the weapon of choice in that video that live stream was a black zoom trick worm all black on a quarter ounce jewel bait squirrel head uh, shaky head this is a great bait if i get myself around any sort of rock any sort of jetties pile and stuff like that that i want to really soak and really fish Let's say I get two, three bites on a square bill, going down one stretch riprap, I might spin back around, fire that shaky head down there and really work it slow and dead stick it and catch some extra fish. I don't throw the shaky head that often, but in August, it is definitely one of my go-to baits. I normally throw it on the bait caster, but a lot of my rods are accounted for already, so I'm just gonna go with a spinning rod with this. Uh, this is a seven foot four medium action quantum smoke S3 a uh, spinning rod with 20 pound braided line. This is Sunline braided line for my main line. And I'm tying a liter of 10 pound uh, FC Sniper fluorocarbon onto here. It's just 10 pound test, nothing crazy. Tie it with an FG knot between the braid and the fluorocarbon line. And what I'm gonna do with this again is just fish it super slow and use it as my last resort if I'm struggling to get bit or if I just need to put an extra keeper in the boat. Honestly, if I'm catching them on the shaky head, either I found like an offshore spot that's loaded and I'm catching five pounders on it, or I'm really, really struggling and I'm only have like two or three fish in the boat and I'm trying to fill out my limit. So uh, it could be a good thing or a bad thing if I pull that out. And those are all the rods I have. You can see I have still plenty of rods. I have eight different rods set up. I have a lot of different areas I wanna check out. And I tried to have baits that fit the need in any situation I'm going to come up against. Again, I haven't been to Kerr Reservoir in over two years, so I have no idea where the fish are going to be, what they're gonna be biting, the style of fishing I'm need, gonna to need to be doing. So basically, I'm just gonna to have to wing it, and I wanna have all the tools at my disposal to make that happen. 
Hopefully you learned something from this video guys and better understood my process for not only picking the baits and the rods and stuff like that, but also my overall strategy for selecting fishing lures for different situations. Again, if you missed my preparation video where I actually showed you where I'm gonna be fishing, check it out on the Fish in the Moment YouTube channel. You can see me going through Google Earth and I'm telling you, I shared an amazing tip about how to identify good water willow grass using Google Earth. So go check out that video. And one more thing, if you do want to pick up any of the equipment that I talked about in this video, I'd really appreciate if you use my Tackle Warehouse link. Just go down in the description, you'll find my Tackle Warehouse link down there. Click it, check out on Tackle Warehouse, and I get a small percentage of the profits. It's the easiest way to support the channel by far. You guys are already buying fish and tackle, so just use my link. Even better if you use bookmark it to your favorites. That way every single time you use that link and bookmark it, um, every time you click it from your bookmarks, I'll get a small percentage of your purchase. So really appreciate all the support guys. Hopefully you're enjoying this Catch 15 series and these preparation videos, the actual fishing videos. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to keep doing these. And other than that, thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you on the next one.